Again. My name is Justin Barbosa. As we welcome you to Fight Live. Joined by Brian and Forrest as it's the Astros and the Red Sox for the championship game here for the Post Oak Little League Championship. Yeah, it's a beautiful day here in Houston, Texas. We've got Peyton Leffler on the mound for the Astros. Astros are on full rest. The Red Sox have played a couple extra games and uh, had to work their way back out of the loser's bracket to get here tonight. So Justin, uh, Forrest and I have, have both coached in the majors and uh, both of our boys have uh, been on the uh, postseason all-star team for, uh, and Forrest is actually the coach. And one, of the, one of the coaches. One of the coaches, and we've done this since when they were nine years old, so. Wow, Nathan Leonk starting out strong. Right back up the middle on the first pitch. We'll lead off single for the Red Sox. And I'll get going for this championship game with Peyton Lofer on the mound. So we just uh, we just finished up at the uh, with the juniors game over there. I just got done announcing it was the Windy City Classic, <laughs> and uh, out of the losers bracket came the uh, Cubs to force game two, which looks like the same thing as a possibility here. Explain to them what is going to happen. We all caught in the pickle. Here's the throw to third. Gonna get back, gonna slide in, and everybody's gonna be safe. Yeah, so, Leong, Leong's probably one of the fastest players in the league, and that speed almost backfired on that play. So what, t tell them the deal for us about uh, the winner and loser bracket and two double elimination. Well, I mean, the it's actually the Astros beat the Red Sox last week, and so the Red Sox have worked their way back out of the loser's bracket, and um, they've, they've, gotta beat the, they've gotta beat the Astros today and tomorrow to yeah. win the championship. Astros just have to win the game tonight. And that's in there for a strike. They'll be 0 and 1. Yeah, over in the juniors, the, the, the thing of the juniors is they play back to back doubleheader. Butters on second and third, no outs. And that's high. Here comes Leon. Here's the throw. And it's going to be no throw. It's going to be 1 0 Red Sox. And Randolph will advance the third. So, uh, Justin, one of the unique things out here at Post Oak is, is that uh, there's a pitch count rule here at Little League. World, Little League. So, at 12 years old is when you can go to Williamsport, but uh, if any of these guys want to pitch tomorrow, they can only pitch 20 pitches today. Mm. Here's the pitch, that's grounded. Tag at third is wow. in time, and I'll be two away. Huge double play. Bad base coaching, <laughs> bad base running by the great Johnny Randolph, who is one of the great coaches out here. He coaches the all-star team which this year has a chance to go to Williamsport. How about the scene out here, Forrest? You know, the sun's going down. It's getting nicer and nicer by the minute. I think the crowd's gonna keep building up. How many people do you think are out here? A couple hundred right now, but I bet it'll have four or 500 by the time the game's I really, get, really gets going. I don't think you saw it, but I think we had about a thousand people here. And Lofler loses the handle on the baseball. Wow. And here's the throw to third, uh -oh. gonna be overthrown. Uh, he's gonna score a run for sure. And Jake Raby will score. That'll extend it to 2-0 for the Red Sox. Big error by the pitcher, Leffler. You know, he just needs to calm down here. As it'll be 2-0, just one out. One of the uh, unique things is, is that the umpire who's over here on third comes from a long line of he played actually in the Little League World Series, right oh, wow. here. Yeah, so he's from one of a long line of Bel Air family kind of legacies of uh, Little League baseball. So he's he's the youngest of three. He was the Bel Air baseball coach All Star team last year. So if anybody's if anybody's watching right now, watching uh, the. The meeting we just had on the mound. We've got a couple of coaches in the Astros that have some special haircuts after the uh, win the other night. Their their mustaches have grown out and the mullets are cut fresh. And uh, so both of the coaches for the Astros are uh, looking yeah. sharp for the game tonight. Yeah, so I'll bring up Henry Simons to the plate. Had a big home run the other night, Wednesday. Here's the pitch. That's high. 
I think Henry's the home run leader in the league right now. He's in second. I think he got like maybe he's got four now. Two well, in the playoffs. Two in the playoffs, and they were big ones. So yeah, he's been he's been big. Um, and he pitched the other night. He had a great pitching outing. Actually, saved the game for him. Let them save their pitchers for tonight. The Red Sox would be in big trouble if he hadn't pitched for him and done so well for two, a little over two innings on. Uh, I think it was Wednesday night. And that's going to be a swing and a miss. I'll make it two and one. So ten teams played in the league, 12 players each. Uh, Forrest will know the answer, but uh, the Red Sox were kind of middle of the pack, right? Yeah, they were, uh, I think, fit the fifth seed coming into the playoffs. And what about the Astros? Ninth. Yeah. Astros were ninth. Um, ninth they were tenth. They were, but they, but they also, you know, during the regular season, it was so close between the, I think, the fifth place team and the ninth place team. There's only a game or two separating them, so it really wasn't like a. Uh, they didn't have a bad season. They were just hot and cold. And when Peyton was on the mound, they tend to win. And so ended up, I think, in the ninth seed. You know, p poor Justin over here. He's not familiar with all these kids like we are, but he's a pro at this, and uh, he's an awesome commentator here. And we thank him for coming out here to help all these parents and. Post Oak's a special place, you know. There's tons of great alumni that come out to watch this stuff. And uh, in this a neat experience to have this thing live broadcasted. We got a professional. And, uh, Some amateurs helping out. Yeah. So J.D. Streeby is batting now. He's actually, the you know, obviously right in the middle of the order here for the Astros, but he's been a big part of their season. Batting, so, batting over 400 um, in the middle of the lineup. That creates a lot of havoc on the bases for the, uh, the other teams to deal with. Puts the ball in play a ton. A, a little fact, uh, Coach Shane Hildreth of the Astros, also owner of Vibe, <laughs> won the Pee Wee Championship. And then we coached together in minors with his son. And uh, that was in 2020. And we claimed that we won it that year. <laughs> and then, uh, so he probably is going to be one of the first coaches maybe to take all three, right, Forrest? I don't think there's a Mount Rushmore, but if there were, he'd have, he might get one of the four spots. I yeah, think. right. He might. And probably the other coach would be the great Johnny Randolph. He won as a peewee. Did he win? He went to the final the next year. So I don't know if he won the year before, but in the, the four years that his son Charlie is, or this, I guess four that had that finished the season, they uh, they were they were close to the top every year if they didn't win it. 2-0 after one, right? Yes, it'll be 2 nothing as the Red Sox lead it here on Vibe Live as we'll head to the ball in the first. You know, one of the things here at this, at this level is two runs is not a lot. <laughs> I mean, they, they, uh, they, they uh, you, you've seen runs scored in bunches. Actually, in this last game, uh, saw the, the muscles score five in the bottom of the fifth. And you would think the Thunder out it. Thunder ended up scoring two more runs with two outs. Had a little two out magic. Neat, a, neat, uh, a neat stat is that the great uh, Chris Hutchison uh, claims that he won as a, in 2020 with his Cavs. They were undefeated before COVID. <laughs> we coached together, or he was the head coach. I coached with him last year. He was the Pirates. We won the world champion as a major. And he just won. I thought it was just the pole championship. It was the world it's, championship. This last is year? world. This okay. is beyond pole. And uh, at this level, I mean, it's the greatest day on earth, right? And uh, <laughs> he won the. Uh, he just won, uh, he was the coach of the team that just won there, the Mighty Muscles. And uh, another lone fact is, is that he played right here as a pirate. Um, he's 45, and he did it when he was 12 years old. Oh, he wow. lost in the last inning. Oh man! <laughs> so there's a lot of ki there's a lot of alumni out here that they we we, we had uh, Todd Glazier who's going to be the new president and uh, Forrest he's 49 years old he played for seven years he coached for nine years and his son has played for eight years he's been out here half of his life. Yeah, just keeping the tradition going with this family and just a rich hit history here at the Post Oak Little League. So, uh, if you're trying to keep traditions going, I guess you get that guy to, to be the president of the league, right? So, uh, today at 2.30 today, we had a, uh, we had a, what they call a hat ceremony, and they take all the guys that have been, that have finished the juniors, and they do a ceremony. They present them with a hat, and they have every pin from every team on there, and there were five kids 
who had the fortune and ability to play eight years. But most of these kids will play seven years, um, with this being the pinnacle game right here. Yeah, it's reared to bomb the first. Red Sox lead it 2 0. That's fouled away. Forrest's team actually beat uh, the Marlins. Um, that would be my team. He was the Cardinals. Um, his son is a stud. And he also had another great player on there, Miles Kelly. My, did Miles, was he the home run leader? At the regular, end of the regular season, he definitely led the league in home runs and was one of the better pitchers in the league. So definitely had a great season. A lot of it was due to how Miles. And what about Charlie played. Randolph? He's always kind of been one of the top players out here. He's out there on the mound right now. And I think uh, the thing is, I would say if you had to ask who the Red Sox are or why they're here, is that they've got Charlie can really hit. They've got a lot of guys that put the ball in play, and it seems like Johnny is able to get the guys to do that every single year. It doesn't matter who he drafts. They put the ball in play a lot, and they run the bases like crazy. So it was a little surprising. I mean, I know that ball was just hitting an unfortunate place, but to see them making out in the base paths is usually not what you're going to see. And guys on second, third with no outs, usually they're going to pick up a couple more than two runs too. So you're right. It is a it's still a close game at 2-0. And so both of our sons play uh, catcher, but I personally think this is one of the better catchers up here. Uh, the plate has just been roping. Yeah, James Hildreth, his dad's the, obviously the Astros coach. He has so many first names, Jimmy Jack. Yeah, we coach together. You know, you just want your kid to be like him. He's a grout man, goes down swinging. Ooh. Charlie just stealing there. Is that, uh, how many pitches is that? Not too many. Uh, quick work there. and Charlie's coming off 90 pitches and he pitched uh, on Wednesday, so. It's a good thing for the Red Sox to get him off to a good start. It was a uh, we are we are honored to be next to now. the great uh, Mark Toon. Mark actually is the owner of Vite Media, which brings games to you live all over the state of Texas, and they've really kind of revamped what high school sports and little kids sports are like. And uh, it's just amazing how how well they've done and. We're just honored that they have him here at Post Oak. I think I, I think the juniors field was calling and asking Brian if he could come back over to watch the uh, the game over there. You don't want any more of this. Mark Mark was just asking how many games you're going to do today. <laughs> you saw Lachi at the plate. That's going to be a swing and a miss. No, that's Sandalachi. Leffler's on. Lefter Lefter got on though. As it was Loeffler with the hard hit single. Rocco's had some great games this season, not just. And yeah, that's a swing and a miss. I'll end the inning. Red Sox still lead it 2 0 as we'll head to the top the second. So far, the mullets haven't worked. We'll see how it goes after, after the first inning. You know, there's a unique fact or a unique or kind of a bad situation that happened to the Red Sox. Kind of there, you know. Second ace pitcher. Yeah, the leadoff hitter. And leadoff hitter. I don't think he even had a strikeout. Not in the entire season. And uh, he. Sorry, Owen, Owen Ott, you're talking about Owen. Owen Ott, he broke his arm doing what? Ran into he a wall. He said he ran into a wall. <laughs> I don't know the whole story, but he's got an arm in a, in a sling um, and is out for the season. That just happened last week, and so. And they went and uh, had it checked out, and then they x rayed the other arm. And they said he had a little league elbow on the other one. Yeah, so he's, yeah. So hopefully he can get healthy really quickly. And the Red Sox did fine with him these last couple games. This, you know, but it's going to be tough for them from a pitching perspective to uh, make it. Not only do they have to win tonight, but they have to win tomorrow to uh, to do take care of this. So to do it without their number three, number two, number three, depending on who you ask. But uh, Raby's pitcher. done a great job, right? Raby's done a great job. He's their, you know, big arm that they'd put in to start the game tomorrow. He's not eligible to pitch tonight. He's really the only pitcher that's not eligible to pitch tonight for either team is Jake Raby. So, um, yeah, the Red Sox have kind of had to scramble to fill that spot that Owen um, was filling for them all season. Uh, not to mention the spot in the field and the leadoff batter was hitting, you know, over 500 on the season. So it's going to be a... And do uphill they go battle to, for the Red Sox. And do they go to him if they're in trouble, or what do you think? Who are they going to go to? Yeah. Raby's not eligible tonight. He's not eligible. He's not eligible. At all. He can't pitch tonight. Um, and so they're going to have to go to Nathan Leong or Henry Simons, like they did the other night. Henry Bolin has pitched some for him this season. So 
they're going to have to scramble or, or uh, hope that Charlie Randolph has a really efficient outing and get, get in. I mean, he's got 85 pitches he can use tonight. Um, and he's gonna, they're not going to use him tomorrow, so I would say he goes the distance as far as he can go, and then they're going to have to figure it out from there and try to keep el as many people eligible for tomorrow. As that's fouled away, make it one and two. So Leffler seemed, uh, if he gets a little rattled, who do they go to next? That's the thing. Astros have everybody at their disposal, so I would say their number two guy all season has been Rocco. Um, for a few games this season, he might have even not pitched Peyton a little bit. He's, he's a crafty uh, pitcher. Ben Lux, Benny Lux can also pitch. Sam and Barrett pitched against Barrett us. Barrett well. pitched great uh, in a few games this season. He's, fiery, he's a fiery kid. He's not very big, but, boy, he hits above his weight. That's going to be a swing and a miss for out number one. He's probably got the best flow out here, Barrett. <laughs> and his brother won the championship last year, so something's going on in there. He did. They're, they're just good luck charms, aren't they? Something like that. As that's going to be inside, 1-0. Oh. So okay. Delacondra is another one of these guys at the bottom of the order that's been doing damage for the uh, for the Red Sox. So it's been a uh, all hands on deck for these guys the last couple of games without Owen. So the juniors have to go tonight. Double header. They're just about to start. But I mean, how tough is that? Can you imagine for us? No, I would not want to have to play two, especially that first game. This gets great out here right now, but that first game in the yeah. heat would not be. And what if you lose? Man, you came out of the winner's bracket and you lose. Yep. Momentum shifts. So the, the Cubs grounded. won that first game? Cubs won that first game. God, what a great play. Yeah, Barrett comes across the diamond for that one. And I'll be two away. He's a Spring Branch kid, sixth grader or fifth grader? I'm not sure on Barrett. I think he's in sixth grade with these guys. Most of the players out here are in sixth. A couple fifth graders, early birthdays, or late birthdays, I guess, depending on how you look at it. You know, and one of the best players, I think, in my mind is an 11-year-old, is a fourth grader, and Owen Ott is a fourth grader. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of those guys that have unlucky birthdays, but they're good baseball players, so. Yeah, that's Andrews. Steve. Gets on with the single. His friends call him Wiggins. The likeness to Andrew Wiggins of the Golden State Warriors. In the he must be batting 10th because they're playing with 11th tonight. Parse is up now. And Parse has been another player who um, has really made a lot of contact in the playoffs and put some uh, put the barrel on the ball and, again, turns the lineup over for the Red Sox, which is what they're looking for to get back to the top of the order. It seems like Johnny always had him firing on all cylinders. Well, the funny thing is a couple of these guys have played for him two or three times. Stieg is in his at least third season playing with uh, Charlie, Charlie and and, uh, and Johnny. He played for the Irish both of his years as a peewee and got to hold one of those trophies. So Andrew Stieg is part of the magic for, this guy, for these guys. And that's fouled away. Or Wiggins, depending on who he is. I would say no one puts in more work than Johnny Randolph as a coach. And Randolph's Red Sox up 2-0. And that's a fly ball in the right field. It's going to hook foul. Did he get a swing like that out of your 11-hole uh, your hitter against the top pitcher in the league or one of the top pitchers in the league? He's got everybody hitting. Yeah, it's count be one and two. Crowd's heating up here as they uh, come over from the... Uh, that's grounded past first baseman. Second baseman's got it. Throw the first is in time. Oh, it's going to be safe. Wow, that was close. Looked like Benny made that play to me. It'll be runners on first and second with two outs. That's J.D. Wynn at first. It looked like he had a clean catch there, so it must have just been a bang, bang play. Back now at the top of the order. Yeah, Nathan Leong's back up. Had that first pitch hit right back up to uh, right, right back up the middle to start the game. This is not helping Peyton's pitch count. No box at this level, right? Can't, you base. cannot balk. That's right. Literally, no leads either. 
So I talked about this on the letters thing, you know, Forrest, what's your opinion about Little League Baseball versus uh, Select Baseball? Well, I mean, it think, I think it changes everything because you're playing a, you know, almost three-month season against the same kids and you know the kids, whereas in a, in a tournament baseball, you go and you play different teams every weekend. Every you know, every Friday the season starts over. The, game, the tournament's over on Sunday afternoon, so I think this is you know, much more like a regular baseball season that you get to experience out here, and especially at 12 years old, 11 and 12 years old, playing closed bases, I think, helps you work on the fundamentals, not just holding batters on first and on second, so. And that's past the third baseman. Runner rounds third. It's going to be Steege. And he's going to make it home just in time to make it 3 0 Red Sox. Yeah, Nathan is 2 for 2. And if nobody was in front of him, he might have turned that into a double the way he runs. Well, my, 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 uh, what I heard was this is that in select baseball, if you don't win, you just go sign up for another tournament. But at this level, there's pressure. You know, these kids really get to experience what pressure is like, and you can see it. Yeah, you can see it basically in every at bat. And this is a huge one right here. You got pitchers facing off against each other, Charlie Randolph. And batter's box right now. Two on, two out. And that's a hard hit ball in the center field. Oh no. It's going to go all the way to the, to the wall. One will score. Here comes Leong. And I'll make it 5 nothing Astros. Charlie is one of the most heads up baseball players around here on the bases. And it looks like Lefter is a little shaky. And here comes Shane Hildreth out to the mound. You really get to see the difference it makes when you get those bottom of the order guys on base. Nathan and Charlie came up and just did their job, knocked them, knocked them right in. It was really a single by Charlie, but he's standing on third right now after this, this throw, that throw home. You're not going to get Nathan on a throw like that. The other thing is, is that you forget that they are 11 and 12 year old kids and the emotions of the momentum just swing so quickly. Yeah, and we've all been there when we were little playing baseball, get frustrated with yourself and just got to shake it off and get ready for the next game. That's right. Harder, harder said than done. Well, one of the things with 12 it means you're about to turn 13, so all sorts of stuff pulsing through your veins at this point. So. This will bring up Raby. He's one of these guys that's about the same size as Peyton. They're pushing, you know, getting close to six feet tall as 12-year-olds. A little bit different baseball for them. Nice pitch. Yeah, this will be 0-1. He's way past 20 pitches, right? No, they're, yeah, he's not pitching tomorrow. They're just going to keep letting him go? Absolutely. That's, that's high, 1-1. One and one. And I think if it continues to be, a, if it, you know, if it stays, if it doesn't get close, I would say you just keep them in. You don't want to burn anybody else. You want to have everybody you can ready for tomorrow for the Astros. But we're wait, it's way too early to talk about that right now. But Charlie's only what? What is it? 60 feet, 55 away from home plate right now. Yeah, that's how it's fouled away by Raby. Be one and two. Left one probably touches what? Mid 60, 67. Do you think? He definitely gets into the 60s. There's only a handful of guys that do that in the league. Counts even at two and two. Is he missing high a little bit there? That one looked high. Here's a two two. And now make the count four, three and two. Hills is doing a great job back there. He's kept it all in front of him. Normally the Red Sox would have Charlie across the play right now, but James has made some good stops. Oh, looks like it hit him. Yeah, it's going to be a hit by pitch. And I'll put runners in the corners with two outs. We had a game, we had a game on the minor, I mean the juniors game. Hit him in the seat flap and it broke the helmet. Oh, wow. Must have been a pretty hard pitch. <laughs> Matthew Guyton, probably one of the strongest players out here, broke the helmet. We got first and third, 
Wilcox is up two outs. Wilcox has been playing lacrosse all season. I'm not sure if that's good or bad for your baseball, but he's a lacrosse player as well. He's a gritty little player, isn't he? And he, and he, on the side he, he likes to swing the bat, so watch this first pitch. I don't think he has a walk, right? Not many. He does have any. It's going to be a stolen base by Raby. Two runners in scoring position now for the Red Sox with two outs. And that's low, 1-0. That's going to be outside. Well, I think you have to take this one with Henry Simons coming up next. I can see this one going over right here. Oh, that's up. And that's ball four, and the bases are going to be loaded with two outs for Hunter Simons. Henry. No, no, yeah, Henry's, uh, Henry's get, looks like he might have been coming in as catcher. At least he's looking for some gear in the dugout right now. He's taking his time. Henry is a home postseason home run leader, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this ball uh, takes a ride. Uh, let's see. And the game on Wednesday, he hit one to deep left center field, went over the scoreboard. You get the Red Sox and went over the Angels. I don't think he thought he was coming up. He didn't have batting gloves on. He wasn't ready to go. Let's see if he's uh, ready for this first pitch. Henry's one of the happiest kids you've ever met. Two outs to Henry Simons. Base is loaded. Here's the pitch. And that's a hard hit ball to the left side. Going to be fouled. Let's look out. Star from Row over here. Star Row Row. We might get a backflip out of him if he uh, does some damage here. That's high. 1-1. One, one. That's low. Here comes the runner heading towards home. It's Randolph. Here's the throw in the slide. And he is safe. And I'll make it 6 nothing Red Sox. Not how the Astros had this plan. No. And how long do y'all think for they take Loeffler out? They don't take him out. I don't think they do, but, you know, because they can't use him tomorrow no matter what. So I think you just let this one run its course. And it's going to be a 3-1 count to Simon. And if they do take him out, it, I don't think they're going to leave those other pitchers in very long. They might pitch an inning each, use their 20 pitches so they can be available tomorrow. Yeah, I almost think you've got to have it. That's a high fly ball, and that is going to be foul. And that definitely had the distance be a home run affair. And then so. That ball was hammered. 190 over the left field fence. That ball On lands. On the minor's field. <laughs> that ball lands. 60 feet past it. It's 250 for a 14-year-old child. Yeah, it's going to be bases loaded as Simons walks. So Reed's up. Reed's been another one of these guys that just keeps putting the barrel on the ball. He's had every hit in the playoff has been a, playoffs has been a double. Every single one. He plays been playing first year first base all year long for the Red Sox. Locked it down. Here's the 01. That's low. What's the strategy here for Hildreth? That's grounded. Third baseman has it. Going to touch third in time. And now in the inning as the Red Sox. And the Red Sox extend their lead to 6-0. I think as the manager here, you have to decide, are we going to try to fight to win tonight, or are we going to save ourselves for tomorrow? Um, so I think if they, you know, I don't think Hayden's really pitching all that badly. They've had a number of errors um, on hard hit balls, but still, you've, you've had, they've had the chances to make some plays in the field. They just haven't made those plays. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of nice hits, but also some unearned runs in that inning. So I don't think the Astros are out of it. I'm not sure if Shane will want to go to his next pitcher or just uh, – Try to put some runs on the board with the offense. Just got to put a couple barrels on the bat. 
find a way to get started. Red Sox sure have been hitting the ball up and down the lineup. They really have. I mean, you make you put the pressure on the other team when you put the ball in play. Especially at the bottom of the lineup when they hit, too. That's all right. The, hit the, the Parsa putting it in play. Yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of the you know the key here is you know everyone's got a really solid top of the lineup between the bottom of the lineup is up to twelve or eleven and they're hit when they hit and there's no strikeouts it's hard to beat teams. That's right. At least you, at least you put the pressure on the other team to make those plays in the field. I the will say the, that both of these teams and part of the reason they're here is that they've had the bottom of the, or the, you know, the bottom of the lineup guys the guys in the outfield. Well, you know, the other thing that uh, is unique, this is for us, it's not 162 game baseball. This is 18 out baseball. That's right. There's 18 outs and that's what they're playing. And There's no time limit tonight, but during the regular season, a lot of times you don't even get to those 18 Yeah, outs. that's right. Um, so he's gonna have to manufacture some runs. Hopefully, hopefully he's taught him how to bunt because he just needs to put runs across the board. Well, they got the first guy coming up here, J.D. Wynn, has at least a couple home runs on the season. Um, and had a uh, had a good season. Plays all over the diamond for him. So he's definitely got you have to keep your eye on. He's batting in the five spot. Sam Barrett's coming up next. Randolph on the mound for the Red Sox. Here's the pitch. And that's in there for a strike. And grounded. It's going to be fouled. It's going to be 0 2. Yeah, this is JD's second year in the road to play in the championship game, so he's doing something right. His dad was the coach of the team last year that made it to the finals. Didn't win, but gave it a good ride. They were similar to the Astros this year, a team that worked their way out of the the lower end of the bracket to uh, make it to the championship game. And that's outside, one and two to win. They need something to get them sparked up here. Yeah, at least get some. Moon yeah. over there. <laughs> and swing and a miss, strike three. That was a heat from Randolph. Is that his third down or fourth down? How many strikeouts is that for us? I think that's three. I'll check though. Now you see some exciting uh, throws out of the catcher. Henry Simons will, uh, will bounce it to third sometimes. He did it, and Henry Bowen at third made a nice play to. to Here's get a pitch to Barrett. Never a dull moment. Randolph got streaky sometimes, but when he is on, he is. Stays calm, doesn't get high, doesn't get low. Definitely one of the top players out there. Here's a 2 0. And that's in there for a strike. Took some off of that one. Moving quickly, you know, no time in between, keeping a good rhythm. No, you're right, Brian. That was four strikeouts, so all the outs so far have been strikeouts. Aaron, the zone. Charlie can get up to 60 sometimes. I bet you he's around Definitely, yeah. 55 for most of the time. Tall, so he's able to throw down on it, which it's hard for some of these kids to be able to pick it up. Yeah, when they're throwing from 46 feet, you can basically add about 50% if you want to translate it to major league speed. So if you're throwing 60, it's like you're throwing 90 from 60. And swing and a miss. Or from the major league now. That's five strikeouts through. One and two thirds, so that's all, it's all strikeouts. He's not te they're not testing the defense of the Red Sox just yet. Have they had a runner on base? I believe Peyton got on base. It was Spain Lothler with the hard hit single. That's that tie. Me Doro's at the plate. St. John's kid, been on 
on my team a couple of times and a hard working, <laughs> really smart kid. Pretty mature move there by Randolph, taking a little time down. And yeah, that's low, two and one. You know, one of the things that's unique is, is these kids can only throw 85 pitches. The first 30, compared to the last 25, the velocity really goes down. Yes, yeah, the count will be two and two with two Alcidoros. Sam's the only lefty. First time Charlie's had to see somebody other, in the other batter's box tonight. We're up to a full count. Here's a pitch from Randolph and swing and a miss and got a piece of it. Stay alive. I think this is a pretty critical uh, pitch right here. I, I, think, I think they got to have a runner on base. Through two. Well, <clears throat> the Astros definitely won their first couple games in the playoffs on emotion. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to take some. You have to get fired up to uh, mount a comeback here. Like you said, though, let's get somebody on base, and then you can start to start to worry about scoring a run. They came back from the. Uh, they came back and beat us in the last inning of down seven. Down five. Ten to five? Ten to five. Ten to five, one, eleven, ten? Yeah. Here's the three, two. And that's in there for strike three. Wow, and now in the inning. impressive. That's he six. burned a couple of extra pitches at that at bat, Sam did, but uh, Charlie, six for six here. Well, with that one hit in the middle. But yeah, all the outs so far, strikeouts. Not a single ball in play other than a single. Yeah. Seven, uh, seven batters face, six strikeouts? That's it. It's going to be hard to. That also means he's going to face 9, 10, 11, 12 right now, coming back up for the uh, Masters in the next inning. I so. don't want to make any assumptions, but. Good start for the Red Sox. Yeah, so Red Sox lead 6 0 as we head to the third inning. And we'll take a small break here on Vibe Live. And we are back here atop the third as the Red Sox lead it. 6 nothing over the Astros here in the Majors Championship game at Post Oak Little League. So I just checked on the pitch counts. Peyton's already at 58 right now through two innings. <laughs> and Charlie's thrown 28 for the Red Sox. So at this, at this pace, the Astros are just hoping to get out of this third inning and maybe get Peyton back for a little bit of the fourth. At already at nearly 60 pitches. Here's a pitch to Streeby. And fouled away 0 and 1. And we'll see how Lofler does this inning, getting high in that pitch count. And that's a hard hit ball. The left field just fouled. Doesn't get much closer than that. Just a little bit, just over that line. 
You know, Forrest, at this, at this age, it's all about flipping the lineups. If you flip the lineups... Oh, Nate. The, uh, if your bottom order can hit, there's no lineup to flip, right? You're going to have to make work 1 through 12. That's what the uh, Red Sox are making it do right now. So Charlie's uh, faced seven batters thrown 28 times, 21, pit, 21 strikes with six strikeouts. I think that's good in Little League Baseball. Oh. And hit Streeby on the helmet, and he'll take his base. Streeby had a long look at Peyton there. I'm not sure why. <laughs> so it kind of got a unique situation here. Peyton is uh, face 18 batters. That's the 65th pitch. He's only got 20 pitches left. That's right. So uh, Shane's got to be thinking, and, and there is a run limit. Is it in effect? No, not. it's not I don't in effect. I think it is for the championship. I'm not sure about that. You'd, to save arms, you'd hope it is for the Astros' sake, but I don't, I'm not sure about that. We can ask him between any. Yeah, we, we, need, we need to find the rules on that. I'm sure we have a commissioner within arms. Wait. That's fouled away. Be 0 and 2. So I don't think there's a run rule. I know there's not a run rule actually because there was a great comeback probably three years ago. I think it was the Yankees um, coached by Klosik. I think they had a great comeback. Something like eight runs in the final inning. I think so. And just inside counts even at 2 and 2. That one was close. Peyton wanted that one. I think all the Astros did. It's hard for these boys to stay calm. They get real emotional, and when their emotions get into it, it's hard. And fouled away, still be two and two. Force is what? What do you think? Sixty percent, seventy percent strikes is probably. I think sixty's good. Seventy's great. Seventy's great. And grounded. That's gonna be. That'd be a fielder's choice to be one away. So Bowling trades places with Streamy. Where's Rocco in school at, uh, Forrest? He's, he's kind of been a post oak legend out here. He goes to Western. He goes to all boys schools. Uh, he's had a great run out here. Western's really a cool concept. And that's a hard hit ball. Oh, William Taylor with the uh, pit, and he's out. Fielder's choice. William Taylor was a great frog. Nice play. That was a great play. So he made some plays in the games leading up to this one that got these guys here. It was a it was a uh, play like that where he actually made the catch. There is pretty much just as good, right? He, uh, another it's big hit in the outfield. Going to drop on the one hop. And going to be a single runners on first and second with two outs. I think Andrew Steak's two for two to start the game. He is two for two. Now bring up Owen Ott That's to right. the plate. They're doing the same thing they did in the last inning. So the orders, the, just hitting the ball. So. That's a fly ball, and second baseman is there for out number three as we'll head to the bottom half of the inning. Little Lux is a great little player out here. He plays catcher sometimes on the All-Star team. The 11U All-Star team is probably pretty special. Um, we might see him catch tonight. You might see Hildreth move over to second base. And pitch? See, because, because. Uh, no, he can't, he can't. No, he's got to be out of this inning. Right? Yeah, after he catches three innings he'd have to come out if if if, uh, if Hildreth was going to pitch but I think the uh, there's a chance they could put Benny back behind the mound just to give themselves that give them that option so the, otherwise they don't have the option the Red Sox won their first playoff game 18 to 1 am I right 18 nothing 18 I don't nothing. think the Cubs got on the board for that one but then the Cubs came back around and had to play him again in the uh, consolation bracket the only game the Red Sox have lost in the playoffs is to the Astros the Astros came out, and I believe Peyton was on the mound and just shut him down. I think it was 5-1 uh, to one or 5-2, five, 5-3 five, maybe by the time the game was over, but it was a five-run game almost the entire game. Red Sox had a number of errors in that game um, that cost them those five runs, but this is a rematch from earlier in the playoff run. 
for eight hits, only putting up eight hits and two. Uh, These are pretty pretty legitimate runs. It's not any, not really any junk out here. Well, he's, they've got three three guys on hit by a pitch. They've walked he's, they've walked two and only had eight. So with twelve runners only putting up six, I don't think that it's out of reach for the Astros at this point. I, th I think you got more. You got Looks got, like they're getting, yeah. You got, got Bear coming into the bullpen. Gumby. Is that what they call him? <laughs> That's what I hear. Are they, can, they, can, they can potentially have two trophies at the uh, Barrett house before this weekend's over. Last year and this year. Yeah, I was a part of the Pirates. We won the world championship. <laughs> Hutchison has won now two world championships. And it'll be Springmeyer to the plate, lead off, bottom of the third, One 40 of the Astros. names in the league, Odin Springmeyer. Play some center field for the Astros. Screaming at the tower. Turn the music down, is that what it was? And that's fouled away, B0-1. Here's the old one to Springmeyer, swing and a miss. ROB kid, play center fielder for him on base. Half almost greater than 50% of the time. Yeah. Says here he made a huge catch in center field against the Dodgers. And fly ball in the right center field. Oh, and what a it. catch. <laughs> what a catch. That looks like Leon. It is. He overran it just a little bit, but was athletic enough to reach back and still make the catch. What a play. We played them, and my son hit one off almost. He jumped against the wall and caught it. He's a big kid, supposedly a great basketball player, right? Nathan? I haven't seen him play basketball. I do know out here he's a really versatile player. Had a humongous catch last week, or earlier in the week, against the uh, Angels. Johnny Johnny Wright, speed high. <laughs> That's what you need in center field, right? Right. Well, in, it, in your leadoff position, he's done it. He's made up for what they lost with Owen so far. Owen with the, uh, the arm injuries. So Grant Smith's up to bat now. He's actually one of the fastest kids on the Astros. Yeah, his brother, you know, Grant Smith and Owen Smith are in the championship game. It was Owen in the other game yeah, over there with the so juniors? Their parents are having to go to both games right now. One of them's probably watching this right now, listening to this. As it's going to be one and two to Smith. And just outside, two and two. Astros still looking for that next base runner. Full count to Smith. More balls and strikes here in this inning. And that's in there for strike three, two away, another strikeout. But he racks up another strikeout, so. It did mess up the streak. That uh, fly ball to center field did, uh, did end that streak of uh, all strikeouts for Charlie. Well, he's definitely having an all-star performance. Charlie Janelle is up now. Twelve-year-old all-stars this year have a chance to go to Williamsport. Charlie's going to play a big role on that team. Hopefully he brings this to that team, too. And foul back. So, when does the little league like Post Oak All Star start? The tournament that they play in the district tournament is at the end of June. So they've got this the rest of this month and the beginning of June to uh, to practice. And the team hasn't been finalized yet, so that'll happen in the next couple of weeks. They'll play a couple of tournaments to get warmed up. But the tournament that matters will be right here. It's hosted by Post Oak this year. And how many days do they practice for us? I think five days, five six days a week. But a couple of days are just easy BP days. There's a 
a little light days, but really five days a week are pretty good solid practice, especially once school gets out for these guys, which is just a couple weeks away. I yeah. just learned, or I, I, I knew, but um, the team that was uh, the 2019 team that was played by Cannon Tune, in their entire career, they went 32 and 3. Wow. They won quite the run. They went all the way to regionals and they lost to a team that I believe here one day will be on 30 for 30 for cheating. <laughs> that Louisiana team from yeah, a few years ago. Yeah. So the neat part about Little League Baseball is it has to have a community to support it. So all these kids are within a certain school or an area that's right it's a gerrymandered area but it's an area it's a defined area that you have to be in and a handful well, of schools that you can go to that are in that same area well what did the team out of uh that beat that team in 2019 did is they really gerrymandered and they made up their own league and um so any normal year it would have uh it, it would have been right last year the 2021 team since the 2020 team didn't play which on side note the 2020 team had three really good players one of them is one of the top players in the country right now in Judd Dow um, but last year the 2021 team pushed by Stephen Smith they lost in two extra innings to Paraland that's right who then lost to Needville who made it all the way to regionals and was not allowed to play the game because of COVID. The COVID case, that's right. Made the local news. Yeah, made the local news and yeah. would have, what time it start? I think, it Is made it to the Little League World Series because the team that... So was it the team from Abilene that ended up going? Was that that's the team? right. So, Houston has quite the uh, baseball. No, if you get out of Houston, you have a really good chance of winning the, uh, the region. Foul yeah, ball. I, Boy, look like it hit the bat base yeah, to me. Yeah, so it's got to be on the right side of the bag. But here at Post Oak today, we got four umpires, so. Fully staffed. Yeah. If they're ever going to get it right, today's the day. Today is the day. You so know, the, Back the, to the top of the order again for the, for the Red Sox. It's the third time they flipped the lineup. That's right. Still got left. It seems like he's calmed down a little bit. Didn't have too many pitches pitches left. Though. Let's look. No, I think I think we're getting to the end. Sam Barrett came into the. He's at 75 or 76 right now. So. So he's only got 10 left. 6-0. And fouled away. They need to get Nathan, out of Nathan's this. Nathan's making him work. They need to get out of this inning without giving up a run. Bring in the next pitcher. Start playing small ball. Get people on. Charlie's at 41, so uh -oh. let's see a little Look play. Speed. Yeah, yeah it's no going to be in fight, no infield shot. single. That's Char three for three for Leon. So 41 pitches. I'd say Charlie, Charlie could take it the distance. Absolutely. He's got 85 pitches. And he does have to come around to pitch their top of the order starting in the next inning. I think they're at 12 or maybe back to the top to start the next inning. So that makes it a little tougher. But so at the rate you want to be at 41 through three, that's a great result. So at the rate he's pitching, Charlie, if I am the Astros, I'm now focused on getting him out of the game. That's a, uh, that would be the only thing. And so even more importantly, he's going to be putting runs on the board. You have to have you got to get off that. 16, 18. Boy. And it's coming our way at the booth and almost caught by Barrett. Couldn't quite get under it. One of the hard parts for these kids to learn is, is that when the ball's up in the air, they got to turn and run. And they just, it's just innately a hard thing to learn. And it's really hard at this third base spot because you, there's a almost a foot, one foot drop coming off the back of the dirt right there. It's a really hard play. And a catch at center field keeps Leon at second. He that, went away. Is that Janelle at center? Yeah. Looks like Charlie did not. Yeah. Let me tell you what, that he flagged that thing, hard hit ball by Charlie, and the gun did right to second. Almost got him out. Mm -hmm. Cheating. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, these Astros outfielders have made plays in the playoffs. That's one of the reasons they're here. Man, I see that. Wow. And that's a high fly ball in the right field. And Brady backing up, it drops. Score a run. That's probably going to score two. So Grant Smith is in right, just makes the throw in. As it puts the brakes on. RBI triple for Raby. It's 7 0 Astros. At this age, you know, one of the things, as Forrest said, is, is that some of them pop earlier than other, and, you know, the great equalizer at this level, unfortunately, is puberty. And, uh, or lack thereof. Yeah, or lack thereof. And Raby has really just become a remarkable player. And he was another one of these players that's a serial Johnny Randolph player, too. He's played, he played in one of those Irish teams a few years ago, and he wasn't quite this tall, so it's not doesn't stand out quite as much. But Oh, this one's going to be nice play by quite a play. Here's throw at home, wow. just not in time, and then it'll be now 8 nothing Red Sox. I am really, I was really impressed by that play by the shortstop. He was midway in the center field. He's a, Rocco is a smooth player. And that's the thing, this should be la this should be the last batter for Peyton. He's in the low 80s right now, he can, we'll see here, and they might leave him in to face Henry, or no. To face Wilcox, sorry. Wilcox, no, Henry got up. That was a Wilcox, Wilcox that popped out to a deep shortstop. Henry Simons at the plate. Once again, we talked before. Johnny is just a devoted coach. Puts in so much time on these kids. He's coached all the way through it, and you can't walk around post oak and find a kid that hadn't had a positive experience. Johnny Randolph, and we've seen it, Forrest and I together, he's put in countless hours on our boys, right Forrest? He loves it, I think he's a natural competitor. He's got a system that he uses on all these teams, it's, not, it's nothing, he's not doing anything really all that creative, but he puts in a ton of work. And that's going to be a one hop in left field to be a single for Simons. No, there's nothing There's nothing that he does that's all that different. He just, it's consistent and it works. That's it for Leffler. It looks like Barrett's going to come in as expected. 8-0. At this point, we look like we're coming back on Sunday, right? Well, I think we're waiting to see. Astros have a chance to put some runs on the board. Like you said, if you're right, if they chase Charlie Randolph, things might turn for him. But right now they need to, to at least get a couple runs on the board to put some pressure on the uh, Astros. Right now there's no pressure on the – I'm sorry, on the Red Sox. There's no pressure on the Red Sox right now. And now tomorrow, if it does go to a final game, Leffler's not going to be available to pitch for the Astros. So they're going to have to go with, I'm guessing, Rocco or – some of the other guys that have filled the two, three, four spots as pitchers. So it's going to be a, it's going to be an uphill battle. Funny the, part uh, is, is that this is a rematch, right? Force? That's exactly right. They, they, this is the only team that the uh, Astros lost. I'm sorry, the Red Sox lost to in the playoffs. No, I'm not talking about that. Oh, you're talking about from two or three years ago? Yeah, we're standing next to one of the co-coaches of Shane. I mean, with Shane and Dan Kibitza. That's right. The regular season uh, winner for the league, so definitely had a, a great season, but the Astros. I'm talking about when they were in Pee Wee. I know, but the Astros, the, those two guys had to play against their teams played against each other earlier this season in the playoffs. And in, back in Pee Wee, yeah, it was that the Owls team. Versus the Irish. Against the Irish, and the, it was a really close game, if I remember correctly, in a low scoring game, and the Owls came out on top. Right. There's a few players in this game that were on those teams. And, and, and at that level, What's unique is, is, is that there's normally a run rule and they take it out for the playoffs. And you've, I, I can tell you that uh, my first year coaching, we had uh, 12 scored on us in one run, Ouch. in one inning. And that's when, hard to recover from. It's hard to stop it when the uh, momentum switches on you. So the, uh, the Astros coaches have had a uh, – a uh, tradition or that they've started, he enforced an appearance, right? What's that now? Uh, they've, they've worn tank oh. tops, 
They've grown mustaches. Oh. And, wait, what were you saying? They they shaved mullets. They shaved mullets. It's hard to tell with the hats on, but yeah, there's not much on the sides and all everything in the back going right now. And um, the mustaches are the most disconcerting. Um, hopefully they're gone within a few days, but right now there's some uh, very 70s looking mustaches between uh, the other forest and uh, Coach Hildreth. And no sleeves. The guns are out. Seems like, is, is there a... Is there I'm not a sure what the controversy was over there. Did you catch... I don't know, I'm not sure what was going on. A little bit of discussion. We'll see if we can figure out what was happening over there. Do you, you know what happened over there? Why there was such discussion? Yeah, Find out for us what was going on. So we did figure it out. We did figure it out. Um, had a little help from Jared Ford, one of the other dads out here. Let me know that they were trying to switch Benny Lux in at catcher. Turns out he didn't have his gear with him to play catcher tonight. So I think they've got it sorted out now. Uh, they, uh, yeah, they were trying to figure out what to do, and I think Benny might be coming in for the next inning. They put in JD Wynn to play catcher with uh, Barrett up there on the mound now. So. There's a, there's a rule that you can't catch more than three innings, although. Here comes the catcher's gear right here. With yeah, the so that's, so it looks like they're gonna maybe use that for the next inning or see if they need it. But. And so that we change pitchers? Is, I mean, catchers. Change pitchers, I'm not sure if JD came in for this last inning. I don't, um, I'm Where looking is? for Hildreth out there. Is he in first? Is he, he went to first base, right? Yeah, it looks like James is over at first base, so JD is a catcher. We'll have to see if he was already there if they brought him in. So Langs and Turner is one of the coaches with uh, Johnny Randolph, and I think they probably coached together, I don't know, between all sports maybe seven times together. At least, mostly football, right? Yeah, they always coach coached football a lot together. Of football. They've coached basketball together. They've coached football. Oh, we just found out another another update from the field. Uh, James Hildreth is out. Uh, we got JD in at catcher, but we didn't know that we were looking for James on the diamond. Thought he might be at first base, but that's Rocco at first. Rocco's at first. And, uh, yeah, so they did a lot of changes. It looks like the uh, that Hildreth is under the weather a little bit. Here's still the second. Oh, nice it is in time for out number three. So we call that Johnny Randolph baseball. <laughs> Johnny is uh, notoriously known for teaching these kids to be uh, aggressive base runners. He, he calls it something. Um, it's either snakes are moving or something, something like that. Where, uh, where he teaches these kids to delay steal, half steals. Yeah. And the older they get, the less it's going to work. Because um, arms get but it, but it, and, and they get more accurate and fewer drops. But if they can put same kind of thing, just like putting the ball in play, if they can get action and make the players, make the base, make guys on on the field make plays, it's pressure on the other team. So if you've got fast kids, and Henry's fast, didn't quite work out right there. But down 8 nothing, you really don't have much to lose, especially with two outs. So over there on the peewee field, I think they got a, a barn burner. I think it's two to two. And you can see that far from here? No, I, I've just got a little intel. And it is packed over there, if you can see it. Peewee's kind of the Sorry. epicenter. They, they, it, it creates great parity because there's a pitching wheel yeah. or a pitching machine, and machine. everyone gets the same chance at the same speed. No balls. No balls. You can watch it almost as many pitches as you want. Can't steal home. The home of daddy ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a, a faster version of baseball than this is. But I think the quality of play on the majors field especially 
is fun to watch. I really do like watching the Pee Wee games. So one of the things for us, you being a math guy that's really unique, is, is that 22 teams over there on the Pee Wee field, 12 kids, only 10 kids here, 10 teams oh, here. Wow. So if you think about it, that's half the kids who drop out of baseball, is that what you think? Not quite, no, because this is a really only one year. This is almost all 12 year olds. There's about eight 11 year olds that were drafted up to play uh, majors this year. So it's not quite that much attrition. Um, but there is some, there's definitely some attrition uh, between that first year of Pee Wee. And some guys, you know, kids just play other sports. It's definitely, um, this, is a this is much tougher baseball than hitting off that machine. There's Nobody's trying to get you out when that machine's slinging in there, what is it, 44 miles an hour every time. And irregardless of how many kids sign up, there's only 10 teams that always play in the majors. Tell them why. Well, if you have more than 120 players in your league, uh, well, first of all, that's about the number that sign up every year. But the other limiting factor is, uh, well, one, also space. We don't have enough space to run more than 32 teams that are minors and majors. That's another limiting factor. But the third one that what else comes into play is you've got a, uh, some rules with Little League that if you have over a certain number of players, you have to have two Little League teams that you send if you're going to try to play in after postseason tournaments. And until the first is in what time on the hop. Scoop by the first baseman. And a great play by Henry Bowen. There's been a lot of trouble uh, here on this hot corner at third. It gets harder and harder as these guys start hitting it far, harder because it's, it's close to home plate. Henry made a nice play and a good throw across the diamond. Yeah, so I'll bring out Hudson to the plate. One out. Pulicino at first base. Is who that was? Yep, that's that's Reed. That was quite. And this is this is Henry Boland's first season at Pull. He um, played SBMSA before this year, and because of the way the, the rules work, you're talking about the Little League rules. That because of the middle school he goes to, he's able to play post Oak this year. There are a handful of players that this is their first year because they go to the middle school that feeds into post Oak. Starting pitcher that was pitched over at uh, on the juniors game for the White Sox it was just his first year. His name's Braden Johansson. Hmm. And uh, Braden's quite the player. Quite the pitching duel at that level, too. That's in their first strike. It's two and two. Now, to kind of give you an idea of what we're dealing with here, Parker is the number 12 batter. Parker Hudson is the number 12 batter for the Astros. This is his first time at the plate. Whereas the... Grounded, Bolin has third it. Third time through. And got the he tag. Wow. Wow. So, nice play by Reed. So he comes off the bag, experienced enough to be a right-handed. That's why you have a right-handed first baseman at this level is because he whips around the tag off the base. And it's a play that the Astros haven't been able to make at third base, and the Red Sox have been making it. There's twice in a row. This is the bottom of their order. Those guys get on. This is a completely different inning for the uh, Red Sox, and right now they're looking at three up, three down if they can handle um, Ben. So kind of a strategy change here, right? For the Astros? So, you know, the the bottom of the lineup is not – there. There's there we go. That's the first real hit. Since the first inning. Since the first inning. Um, one of the things that is a strategy I think that Hildreth uses is that he doesn't bat in on-base percentage order. Some of the times you put a great hitter in the 12, 11 and 12 hole because a lot of the times you can get him on base for the first hole hitter to hit. Now it looks look, it's James Hildreth at the plate, so it looks like he's well enough to uh, stay in the game and hit here. Is there a rule as far as coming out of the game? Yeah, he he, he can go right back in, right? He he can go. Well, if they pull him from the, uh, he's got to. I think he still has to get three innings in in the field, so he's got to get out there somewhere. But I think he might have already played three innings at catcher anyway. Um, but yeah, he's. Uh, Looks like he's doing okay now. Taking the first two pitches for balls. Here's a 2 0, swing and a miss. Bottom of four here, 8 0. It's becoming a mountain now. 
especially with the top of the order here, you have to do some damage. They've got a base runner for the first time in a while. Two outs. Good pitch by Randolph. Evens the count, right? All right, 2-2. Two, two. I think you steal them right here. Stay back, Jimmy, Might stay as well, back. Right? right, well, you steal them. was one pitch too late. Steal late. take. Yeah, swing and a miss, strike three, and now in the inning. As well to the fifth. And he had a chance to do that the pitch for four with one strike. And if there was a performance to be had on the mound, Charlie Randolph's giving it to you. 14 batters, nine strikeouts. Yeah, just two hits. You got to give some of the credit to the uh, players in the field for the Red Sox on the times they have had a chance to make a play, especially third base last inning. Henry Bowen made back-to-back -back plays, and Reed Policino helped him out at first base, cleaning up some of those throws. So just a great job by the Astros. As we enter the top of the fifth, Red Sox lead 8-0. Just Barbosa with Bryant and Forrest here in the broadcast booth. Yeah, we'll take a break. It's grounded. Shortstop has it. Here's a throw from Loeffler in time for out number one. As Red Sox score. lead it. Yeah, the Astros need to be as efficient as possible with Baird off of the mound. Otherwise, he can't pitch tomorrow if he goes over 20 pitches. So that one pitch, one out, pretty good start for them. As it's Streeby at the plate for the Red Sox. Yeah, got in front of it, swing and a miss for strike two. Go, Benjamin! Here's the pitch. That's high, one and two. Looks like they're able to get Lux in a catcher. Got the gear in. And inside counts even at two and two. And I'll make it a full count, three and two. So JD Wynn was the one catching last inning. Now he's over at third base where Sam Barrett has spent the majority of the game. Here's 3-2 from Barrett, and that's low ball four. But are on to one out for the Red Sox. Hildreth is over at second base now. Leffler's at shortstop. And that pitch is high. That's low. 2 0. So Lux is the only 11 year old on the Astros. And Owen Ott, the player we mentioned earlier, is the only 11 that's on the uh, Red Sox. I think there were eight that were drafted up this year, seven or eight. Uh, they 
tend to be the big contributors on these teams. They're made up of almost all 12 year olds. Pass count three and one. Here's the pitch. Yeah, ball four. Bottom of the order giving him trouble again for the Red Sox. And I'll bring up D'Alessandro to the plate. Runners on first and second, just one out. And that's lined into the outfield. That should score one. Should be heading home. Here's a throw, and it is not in time. Make it 9 0 Red Sox. Heading towards third base is Bullen. Beat runners on second and third, which is one out. Hilders back in the game. Hilders is second. Hilders is second now. That's right. And where does Lux go? Lux is catching. Okay. Yeah, so I'll bring up Steed to the plate. Yeah, that big hit was by Delacondro. That's grounded. And there's a tag for one out. Fielder's choice. Two away. Second play like that in tonight's game. There's two, two different grounders to third base. Ended up catching those runners, taking quick jumps toward home. So Not Johnny Randolph baseball. <laughs> it's not what you're looking for, especially... I promise you he wasn't telling him to go. <laughs> nice play by J.D. Yeah, great play. I will tell you. But, boy, they're making him work again. Andrew Stieg, that was a, he had, he's had two hits and then a third time up. Nice line, or nice hard, hard hit ball to third base. J.D. made a play on it, but it puts the pressure on these Astros to make the play every single time. Just stepped away for a minute, went over, and uh, the crowd on the juniors and Kiwi was just massive, too. Tight ball, tight ball games. Is Bevo over there again, or is he not here tonight? Can you believe that? That's pretty remarkable. Only a post up. <laughs> well, he was supposed to come out here two different days. They had the rain out. I don't think it would have been very smart to bring him out here in a thunderstorm. You don't want to spook to Longhorn in the middle of a baseball field. I will tell you. Today, you can't bring dogs out here, but I guess you can bring Longhorns. No, I'll, I'll tell you this as we go to a pitching change here. Um, today we heard the president announce his son as, as the last time, and he got choked up and started crying as he announced his son to this kind of time. And uh, Post Oak is very special to a lot of people. You know, for us, they, uh, there's a lot of heart and soul that people put into this place. Definitely, it's a short period of time that you get to uh, see your kids play out there, your boys play out here, so I can understand that. I think we're both done, well, at least you're not. Or maybe you're not, but I'm done. I'm done coaching after this year. There's not a spot for me anymore, so it was fun while it lasted. I think I'm done coaching, too. <laughs> you might have been done a couple of years ago, depending yeah, on. Yeah, I think I'm done coaching, Depending on who too. you ask. So that Sam is. Doros is up on the mound now. Right. They took, they, like we expected, they took uh, Barrett out after 20 pitches on the head. He did a good job, though. He came in, only allowed one earned run. So Shane's kept looking him in the for game. tomorrow, right? Got to be. You don't want to burn anybody. I think he's going to shave his entire head tomorrow. <laughs> that's, what, that's the word we just got on the... We just got as the Red Sox turn their lineup for the fifth time. No, I think it's only the fourth. Only time. the fourth time. Only the fourth time, but like, they'll make it through this time. I don't. I don't think we ever had a time this season. We had. We put up some runs. I don't think we ever had anybody bat four times in a game. Y'all were the highest run. No, total. we weren't the highest run total, but um, we definitely did our did our fair share of damage. And, uh, and I can't remember ever having a four at bat game for anybody. So it also helps that we don't have a time limit tonight. They're not going to run into any sort of time limit. But the Astros have just been. Or the Red Sox have just been hitting the ball, making the Astros work. That 9-0 nine, nine score I'll tell you pretty this, accurate. I'll tell you this. These are coaches who put in a lot of time and effort and are very cognizant. And uh, they'll do the right sportsmanship thing here, uh, as Johnny has runners on base. 
There's two outs. And we don't, we didn't find out for sure about the 10-run uh, rule, but there's a possibility that there's a 10-run rule. I think, I think, I think that is a little league rule. I don't, I think they pulled. Not that for the playoffs. I, I, Paul has its own rules. It, it was in, it was in effect earlier in the playoffs. So it's just, if only if it's a championship rule. Uh, if they're up by 10 after four, game was over earlier in the playoffs. So we'll see how they do it here. But Leong's up. up. Three for three so far tonight. And that's how I make it 2-0. Oh. Astros, the real Astros on a 10 or 11 game win streak? I think after last night it's 11. Is that right? 11 game win streak? Yeah. 11 game win streak. They were 11 and 11, now they're 22 and 11. So. What place are they in? They're in first place now, just by half a game, but they caught the uh, Angels after being behind four or five games. The Angels aren't playing bad baseball. Yeah, that's ball four, base is loaded, and runner will we're score. Ten. We're about to find out what the rule is. No. Johnny, Johnny's a master of the rules. <laughs> and uh, We're going to keep playing. We're going to keep playing. And I guess that they still have to give the uh, Astros a chance to bat at the bottom of the fifth as well. So that's the other factor. We'll see. What do you think Johnny tells his son right there? I think he probably told him just, he doesn't need a home run. He just needs a base hit get some of these guys in. I think the opposite. Three ducks on the pond? What do you think? I think he said, watch a pitch. Let's go hit a grand slam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have some fun with it? Yeah, I think so. If there was ever a time, I guess it's the time to tell him. He's got a smile ear to ear on his face right now. He's never hit one, so, or at least not that I've ever seen, not that I've heard about, so. Not in the game. He's got the power. He's got a see one. His MO is to put the ball in the gaps. He hits the gaps pretty consistently. Right up the middle. Yep. Kid's taking a lot of batting practice. A lot of, doub a lot of doubles. Not, not many strikeouts. Practice. He played some catcher this year. Charlie did. Charlie Randolph played some catcher this year, and they needed to, him to fill in. I think Henry Simons had to miss a game or two, and I saw more than once Charlie Randolph catching this year, not just playing shortstop. So mixing it up a little bit for the Red Sox. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's a high fly ball going to be foul. That's off the neck of the bat. Well, he's swinging. He's swinging three zero. So I think you were right. Yeah, I th I he had the green light. Johnny is not, doesn't want him to walk. Johnny wants him to swing. This could get really interesting, especially if the uh, ball's a little up right here. I think he's swinging. And ball four, another runner will score, make it 11 though. He's too disciplined. He's too disciplined. Bring up Raby to the plate. I mean, you really do want a good pitch to swing at right there. It doesn't have to be a perfect strike, but you don't want to swing at a bad pitch and give them an out for free, especially now with the bases loaded. So I think he's, I think it you're is on, 11 to nothing. I think Raby may take a cut at one here though. I don't, does Raby have a home run on the year? I don't think he does. Despite that size and power, he's another line drive hitter, not a, uh, not a home run hitter. Raby's touching what, 5'10", you think, 5'9"? Well, if I'm 5'10", he's 5'10", because uh, he's taller than me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 5'10", as well. I feel like we're shrinking, though, of course. <laughs> and again, I don't think he's going to stop anytime soon. He's in sixth no, grade. No. About to be taller than his dad. Yeah, I think he's already past that. Good pitch. Made it one to one. This team all goes to play at a Cooperstown. So the first week of June, there's three teams from Post Oak to go to Cooperstown. And uh, should be fun. It's a cool trip. Go all the way to New York. That's check right. out the Hall of Fame. That's right. Little known fact. Uh, yeah, Johnny's being a, a constant gentleman right there. Doesn't send him on a pass ball. Good sportsmanship. He's a, that's a great sportsmanship play right there. That just... Shows you the caliber of person that he 
is than they are. Yeah, and there's not really any, you don't get any extra credit for winning 12 or 13 nothing. So. That's right, that's right. Anyway, when you go to Cooperstown, all the te all the kids, have to, they stay on dorms on site. Oh, wow. And uh, the, all the teams wear the same jerseys. <laughs> so there is no... Oh, you can't show them yet. The pinstripes yeah. or the yeah, fancy yeah. button. So that down. One, they all play in the same jerseys. There's two. Just different colors. Is that how it works? Yeah, there's a red. I think there's a red and a blue. Every kid, every team comes out either red or blue. And this this fence is 208. I think the fence might be. Um, that's going to end the inning. Nice play by Leffler. Yeah. Get Sam out of the inning. I think I think the field is uh, it's. It's like a green monster, so it's high, but I think it's at like 150. 150, so it's it's shorter than 150. here. 150. So they just hit home runs after home runs, and you know, supposedly, have you ever been to Cooperstown? Never been. Yeah, supposedly it's just like iconic, you know, thing. And I know I know a lot of runs are scored on that field. Yeah, one of the things that uh, is uh, unique with Post Oak is is that. Paraland has a great history of baseball. They own their own field. Bel Air has some of the most beautiful fields. And if you've been to Westview, they have one. But Post Oak, hopefully not soon, but we lease this land on a 90-day lease mm. from the HISD. And one day it'll come when all these alumni will step up and uh, Post Oak will have its own home. We don't know when that will be, but there's so many loyal alumni here that they're ready when that day comes. I mean, it's a great central location here. Four great fields, able to get a lot of games in. It does make it a little difficult being um, so central in Houston to find any place where you could do this for a reasonable price. So. Um, that's really the challenge, but it's it's a good deal that we have from HISD, but we're at their mercy to some degree. We are at their mercy, and, the, and you know, just to make everyone aware, uh, there is going to be a time, and I think it's here more recent, that uh, maybe the Y might decide to repurpose their land, and there's going to be an opportunity for Post Oak to find a permanent home, and when they do that, you know it'll be special. Oh, for sure. Yeah, just seeing, you know, throughout this past week, just a great community that comes together for this. You know, that's the difference in Little League and Select Baseball. At Select Baseball, it doesn't matter where you are. And, and like Forrest said, you know, you have to go to a certain school or live in a certain district, come out here. And as you can see, they come and support this like no other. And at the end of the day, they don't really care what the score is. They just want to see good baseball and have good community. Yeah, so we got the starting pitchers up against one another right now. Left for backup for the Astros. Good pitch by Randolph. Good pitch and a heck of a swing. Leffler's hit a few out this year. He yeah, has. He's 0-2, though, here. Rock. Charlie is not going to throw it anywhere near the strike zone. You hope not. Wow. What a play. Throw the first in time. What a way. Nice play by Raby at shortstop. That was a bullet. Love well, to see the extra exit velocity on that one. I'm not sure if that's a hard hit ball. You know, I, I would not expect Charlie to hit that, throw that anywhere near the plate. I think it is a he he missed, on the outside. He missed a little bit. He threw it on the outside corner. I think he went out there and got that ball. <laughs> Payton's been punishing the ball all season long. So oh, that was a hard hit ball. Absolutely. Rocco's up now. What's Charlie at n number of pitches right now? Yeah, let's see if he can get through this inning. It's grounded. Picked up though the first is overthrown. That'll be an infield single. Ah, uh, that's an error. <laughs> to a lot of people around here, they have game changer and. Uh, <laughs> You'd Charlie just went over 60 pitches, and Henry made a nice play with his glove there, but the throw sailed on him a little bit, and it was too high for Reed Polisino, who's made some great plays at first. Reed wasn't able to go up and get that one. He's he's human. I will, so I, I now, will they're gonna, now they're going to have a chance here to do a little damage with just one out in the middle of their order. J.D., who also has some power up to bat. 
You can definitely see Randolph's going more to the what they would call probably a breaking ball or curve ball. These kids' arms are only so strong. And that's a strikeout for out number two. Oh, that was quick. So Sam Barrett up. Barrett at the plate. Two outs. Red Sox lead it. 11 nothing. Yeah, that was a good hack at it. Way behind it. That's how you want to start. You need that first strike, especially in this situation where you want to make quick work of and leave yourself a few pitches to try to get through the sixth inning if you need to. He's definitely got a shot at a complete game with just only you know low 60s right now on the pitch count. Pretty remarkable, you know, averaging about less than 15 an inning. Right. Count two and one to Barrett. Here's the pitch. Fouled back. want Charlie to throw a change of a curveball right here, but you got to have your catcher make a play, and he did. That'll end the inning. As the Red Sox still lead it 11-0, as we'll head to the top of the six. I would say my son has played with Charlie Randolph since they were five years old. That's seven years. Johnny's been the coach every time. I've never seen a game like this for Charlie Randolph. It's got to be a huge confidence booster as he moves on to the next thing. He's going to remember this game for the rest of his life. Especially if they hang in there and win tomorrow. Oh. He needed this one, though. You have to have this one tonight to get to tomorrow. You know, he, he, he can pull on this for the rest of his life. Little League, really kind of baseball career, knowing that I mean, he, the, the second pitcher is out. Can't throw. There's a hurt arm. Realistically, right. everything, all the pressure was on him. All the pressure then, was on yeah, him. Raby was out because he was out of. He can't pitch until tomorrow. Charlie's hammered the ball every time up at bat. Flat out one time, but has pitched like lights out. One of the better performances you're going to see out here. Not overpowering kids either. Just strategically, just hitting spots, throwing curves at the right time. Doesn't waste any pitches. Really no, like you said, to be close to 15 pitches per inning, so uh, I guess a little under that. It's just you got to have it to make it through a full six inning game under 85 pitches, right? Um, so he's got that with room to spare right now. I think he's going to pitch the distance. I don't see any reason to pull him out. You don't have any. You don't need to. He basically has, from a little league perspective, the rest of the summer off. Um, as far as games that matter right now, so Red Sox are now. They have to be thinking about tomorrow and keeping everybody fresh. And we'll have Raby on the mound, barring some unusual decisions by Johnny. So 7:30 tomorrow. I'm not sure. I haven't checked. I hope they wait till it's nice and cool at night. It's gonna be it hot is nice and cool. Nice, nice and hot if we play at 5:30 tomorrow. We'll have to check. We've got JD JD Wynn on the mound now. Is he throwing a lot of innings this year? He has. He's thrown some, and he pitched some last year too in the minors. So um, he's definitely got some experience on the mound. He's just an over. He's just an athlete. Not the same velocity, but we'll see where it goes. As we said before, Wilcox is quite the... Well, the first is not in time. Wilcox is quite the grit of a kid. He was flying down the line there. That's what definitely, definitely helped him. It looks like he might have uh, tweaked something. He's kind of... Being on the base a little funny there. I guess he's all right. Hope he's all right. Johnny's a coach, you know, consummate coach. At this moment, he's worrying about.
base running technique at this at this point in the game. That that uh, <laughs> once Lux found his gear, he was in there doing a good job catching. Um, so Simon's up at the plate now, and you want to keep an eye on him. This is when he's been dangerous these last few games in the playoffs. He'll Deep in the inning, he hits him. Late in the game, he tends to hit him. Especially now with the pressure off a little bit. You know, in the beginning of the game, Henry would be what you would call hyper. I think he calms down here at the end, and he's just got strength like no other. Yeah, kid. we're past past nine o'clock now. That's one. And that's, and that's a that, high fly that ball. ball that is, is deep, and that one that is one. gone. I want to say I called it, but I he, he did call it. They're good friends. Uh, how about that sportsmanship? Hugs from the pitcher. If that's not the neatest thing you'll ever see, he's hit a home run in three games in a row. I'm not sure if all of them in a row, but he's definitely got three in the playoffs. And that one, he didn't even get all of that one. Um, Over the green monster here in uh, <laughs> the, the junior the field. Little, the little green monster, that's right. As it's now 13 0 Red Sox on a two run homer by Simons. Now the kids are just having fun. Let's hope so. Yeah, you know, the thing about this is, is that they get over it quickly. They'll be ready to go tomorrow. Oh, a big cut by Polisina. Definitely more relaxed now. I think that both teams realize it's completely out of reach, and so they're just playing, playing through this uh, last inning. Johnny predicted it. He said we're going to play on Sunday. We heard it out of his mouth, right? <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope he was still trying to play to win tonight. He told us what on Wednesday night or Tuesday night. He said there will be a game on Sunday. I promise you, he had this team ready. They came out blasting right off the get-go. Top to bottom, too. It wasn't just the uh, top of the order. It was uh, everybody's uh, it's good to participating see in those uh, rallies that they have. A couple of really big innings. It's good to see JD take him down. <laughs> good for the kids' confidence. So this is now JD on JD action, Streeby and Wynn. Good friends, off. too. JD is one of the happiest kids you've ever met. Which one? JD. <laughs> Both of them, but. Couldn't ask for a better night, right? Beautiful night. And that's up the Playing middle a for a single. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we have a, just about a full moon. Cooled off by about 25 degrees, I think. So. <laughs> Hard to beat. And the unfortunate thing is we may have to have a pitching change if JD goes over 20 pitches unless they want to burn him for tomorrow. Through six, through six, the Red Sox have 15 hits, and nine out of the 11 batters have each hit, and five of them have multiple hits, with Nathan Leon going three for three. Has everybody been on base? Are there walks for the guys that don't have hits, or hit by pitch, maybe? There's another one. That's a blooper in the left field. 16, that's going to score. Make it 14 nothing Red Sox. I think. Uh -oh, go to third. Oh, and potential play here. the throw. Big hit by Brolin. 
Hard for Duros to. Yeah, that's a tough. That was a tough play. The ball was. That ball was spinning. And those left-handers hit it opposite field. That ball's tailing off. Got to feel good for Henry though. He had a. Uh, had a rough patch in the middle of the season. He's putting the bat on the ball tonight. Made some great plays at third base too. He's made an impact here at Post Oak in his first year, hasn't he? Definitely. Where was he at school before? I think he was just going to Valley Oaks. He was? So. A couple new kids have. Yeah, I mean, let, let open, you're able to play if you go to Spring Branch Middle School, among other, you know, some other schools as well. But if you live on the other side of I-10, depending on the, you know, exactly where you live, you can't play even though you're really close, much closer to Post Oak than a lot of other families are. So Henry's in that group that just came over this year and he's done a great job. Swing and a miss for strike three, two away. Well, we had to, had to, yeah, we do have to have this mid-inning pitching change just to keep JD under 20. Or so we'll Charlie see, uh, Janelle coming in. Looks like Charlie Janelle is going to come in from center field to uh, to clean it up here. You know, good country lane boy. Uh, <laughs> The south side of Country Lane. Yeah. Uh, his dad is coach. His dad, I think, announces more games than anybody, it seems like. Dad played here. Uncle played here. Uncle won the championship last year in the minors, right? That's right. I, I, did Harris win it last year? Yeah, he did. He did. He, he did win it. You can see in the outfield that the kids get over it very quickly. No, they, they, they're smart enough to know the score, too. Yeah. I mean, there's not any sense in getting upset about this one. It's much harder to lose a 2-1 game than it is a 14-0 game. And at the end of the day, it's 11- and 12-year-old baseball. <laughs> They want to win, but they want to have fun. Well, they're all trying to have sleepovers tonight and figure out what they're doing after this. So. Johnny has three rules on every team. We're going to win baseball game. He said we're going to have fun, we're going to learn about baseball, and we're going to win some games. Yeah, that's a good saying. Like I said before, there's not a kid out here that doesn't – Enjoy being with Johnny as you just saw on third, chest bumping him. I thought there was no swimming on game days. I thought that was another rule. Yeah, no clubs. <laughs> no, no swimming on game days. No clubs. Wiggins is going to be back up to bat in a minute for the Red Sox. Looking for a third hit, I think. Leon? Mustaches will live for at least one more day for these uh, Astros coaches. So where'd you grow up? I grew up uh, down the road in Pearland. You play Pearland baseball? Uh, I played some at the YMCA, but that was about it. <laughs> Quick work by Charlie Janelle. All right, here we go. I've seen 14. Two pitches, one out. I've seen 14 scored. That would uh, justify the mullets if they can get 14 right here. <laughs> they need a rally. I'll cut my hair into a mullet if they score 14. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get somebody on base and get it going. One at a time, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It'd probably take him two times to flip the lineup to make it happen. Charlie Randolph has pitched 67 pitches, faced 18 batters, laid down 11 strikeouts, has no walks, given up only three hits. So, if I was a batting man, 
not quite sure. Astros pulled some amazing things though back in the day, right? Oh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Ball in the six. Red Sox lead it 14 0 over the Astros. Astros sounds their final three outs. Looks like Charlie's back in there to try to finish it off. 67 pitches, he's got 68, he's got uh, 17, 17 to go. left to go. I don't think he's going to use all 17. Uh, we'll see. These last couple outs can be tough sometimes. That's a first pass ball I think he's thrown, right? Haven't been many. But I think the, the goal here should be to pitch to contact, not worry about them putting the ball in play a little bit, not worry about strikeouts. I'm not sure what they call that one. We're having a little trouble with the pitcher, catcher to pitcher connection here. Henry gets a little excited. I think he was happy he hit a home run. And <laughs> sometimes he just can't control his strength, you know? What a curveball. Nice stop by Simon, so it's 2 2. Full count. So only lefty Doros is up. Facing his first order. walk or 12 strikeout. There it is. How about 12 strikeouts? Whew. What a way for the Astros. Counts. Not many. I don't know who you give the game ball to. I think it's a team game ball. I don't know. A shutout's hard to uh, ignore. What, two hit shutout so far? Maybe Three, three. hit. Three hit, 12 strikeouts. He's got a little work left to do. You know, but when you hit the ball like that, put up runs like that, it just yeah. sounds like a, a complete game, as they call it, right? One well, of those six runs in the second inning was really the nail in the coffin, it seems like. After that, I don't know if the Astros really were in the game, but they do get, to, they get a chance to come back tomorrow and they're going to play one game for all the marbles, barring a 14-run rally right here, <laughs> and a mullet for me. I thought you were going to shave your head. No, although I would end up shaving it, I think, if... Uh, yeah, I don't think you have uh, enough uh, party in the back for... Uh, <laughs> it would just be a mohawk, I think, at yeah, this point. Yeah, I, I think it's just business in the front. With, I think they call that a fade. <laughs> Well, I've had fun. What's going on in the juniors game right now? Oh, we're going to go see. That's a, quite a swing. For 13 strikeouts through six There's innings. Only 17, it's only 17 outs available, so that means four outs were made in the field. And I'm not sure. Actually, I think two hits might be right. That They might have counted that third one. That was the error. Faces 18 batters, lays down 12 of them. You know, and here's the more impressive part to me. No walks. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. That's uh, 13, 14 strikeouts is one thing, but to do that without letting anybody on base for free. Grant Smith is up now. He has definitely done his El job. Flacco, is that the? He has definitely John done his job. Had a good time here, two outs. Enjoyed being with y'all. Definitely. Astros down to their final strike. I guess we'll be back here tomorrow. I think if this we're if we're invited back. Well, <coughs> it's hard to do this unless you know all the kids, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we just come to help you, you know. <laughs> oh no! Uh, oh, we let it go. You can still oh, run to first here. Gonna be in. 
a play. And oh, they'll do it. Oh, scoop oh, boy, on Policito a... to end the game. <laughs> that's a deal. So what's that? What's the final? Let's see here. 14 to nothing, 13 strikeouts, 19 batters face, three hitter, three hits, probably two. And then 16 hits on the offensive side for the uh, Red Sox. So a final 14 nothing. The uh, Astros are going to have everybody available tomorrow except Peyton. Um, and I would have to bet that the uh, Red Sox put Raby out there on the mound tomorrow. So come back tomorrow and they'll play one game for the championship. You bet. And that'll do it as the Red Sox win the Majors Championship with a score of 14 nothing. As we thank Forrest and Brian for joining the broadcast. As that'll do it for us here at Vipe Live. We'll join you for one more time tomorrow as I'm Justin Barbosa along with Jared Hernandez. And thank you for watching Vipe Live.